What's up, everybody? My name is Sean Vaughn, and welcome to Champions Material. Glad to be here. First of all, appreciate everyone who tuned in to our debut episode. I appreciate the love, the feedback, everything. Continue to like, subscribe, and share. And let's see where this thing can go. Said it on the debut episode, saying it again. Throughout all Champions Material podcasts, we'll be introducing the topics we'll be diving into up front. So as they're being discussed throughout the pod, it gives you, the listener, the opportunity to think, form your ideas, perspective. And if there's questions, thought, feedback, anything you want to submit, shoot those over to us at champions.materialsv at gmail.com. Again, that's champions.materialsv at gmail.com. Or you can leave a voicemail. Tell us what you think. Link is at the bottom of the description for this episode. We want them. It can only help grow the podcast and make it better. So the title this week is called Replayables, and this is within the realm of video games. The thought behind this is, any one of you out there that are fans of games, a gamer, however you want to put it, you've played video games through the years that you thought were good, you liked them, you might have even loved them, you know, for different reasons. But there are just those handful of games that were just different. No matter how long ago they came out, they're still relevant to you to this day. They were more than just a video game. Well, you know what? Same for myself and today's guest. Been knowing this guy for 10 years now. A real one. Had to have him here today, especially on this topic. The first guest ever on the Champions Material Podcast. My man, Craig Darrell. What's up, man? What's going on with you, brother? Hey, man. How are you? Hey, I, I, I got to say, it's an honor and a pleasure to be the first guest. I, it's, it's a <laughs> okay. lot of weight on my shoulders. We'll see uh-huh. how it goes. I'm, but we'll see what I can contribute to this. You know, I think uh, you and I both have quite a few experiences over the years um, just having discussions like this and, you know, and on a more broader spectrum. But definitely, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Absolutely, man. And trust me, you know what I mean? I know you built for it. And I've really been looking forward to this, you know, since Champions Material was a thought and now that it's a reality, it's time for us to get going. So before we get into these things, let's go ahead and highlight the topics for the guests out there. Um, and then we're going to discuss them and get into them. First, the replayables, the definition. You know, what makes a game replayable? Like, what do, do we think are the ingredients of a game that's replayable versus a game that we just, you know, play, put down and keep it moving? Throwback. Craig and I are going to lay out a few examples of replayable games that we've played over the years. And then the evolution. How has our definition of a replayable game evolved over the years as we have evolved and transitioned into adulthood and, you know, being men and handling our business out here? So, you know, well, let's get this thing started, man. You know, when I when I say the word replayables, Craig, what does that mean to you, man? What makes a game replayable in your eyes? Gosh, I mean, that, that could, it can be a variety of things, right? When you think of replayable, it could just be very straightforward, replayable, right? right, right. It's something that is easily to pick up um, and constantly go back through. It's not redundant, you know, it's something that you thoroughly enjoy over and over again. Um, but it could also be, you know, a little bit more deep than that, you know, right? It could easily be something whereas, you know, this is game has impacted me and created such an experience, whereas... You know, I, I want to go back and relive it. I want to right, right, re-experience yeah, it. Right. Um, now, don't get me wrong. A lot of those games, especially one of mine that uh, holds dearly to my heart, uh, you know, doesn't have the same impact as the first time I played it. Right. But you know what, though, it, it, it's still a one of a kind of, of an experience um, that very few games, in my opinion, have really achieved throughout the years. For so, sure. But I mean, I mean, that's exactly what we're playable to me. I mean, obviously, everybody's going to have a different definition out there, um, you know, especially with games nowadays. Don't get me wrong. I think a lot of games out there are more uh were playable than ever before i don't yeah, know yeah man yeah yeah but like, when you look at some of uh these online things and all these things that people are doing uh, it's, it's a lot more just replayable um you know where people can just sink in and you know whether it's five minutes or five hours but yeah man that, that's uh, that, that's how i really see it i don't know like, yes yeah, man you're going for. listen man you know look you know i'm right there with you man and quite honestly this is is not a single definition when you're talking about you know what what are the things that makes a game replayable? You cannot define that one way. You damn sure can't define that shit in one sentence. Like, just point blank, period. Yeah. You know, for me, okay, however 
you are trying to draw me back into your game? Are you trying to draw me back into that particular game because of the story? Are you trying to, you know, draw me back into that particular game because of constantly updating the game with content? And to your point a moment ago, that is not necessarily something that, as far as updating a game and dropping new content, that didn't exist, you know, back in the day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, back in the day, the game was done, and either it was going to grab you or not. You know, nowadays we're in an age where, you know, you get a game, you, you're still paying <laughs> full price, but you're getting a game that, let's be real, for all intents and purposes, unless it's like a single player, story driven type of game, the reality is, for the most part, it's incomplete. It's a game, if not, if not incomplete, a game that's going to constantly evolve and add, you know, new things to it via updates, patches, drops, DLC, whatever, the, you know, the case may be. But regardless, are you bringing me in as a, it, it, to, for me to come back and replay it because of the story? Are you bringing me in because of the new content? Are you bringing me in because it's it's memorable? However you want to define this thing, for me, the game's got to grab me. I don't care how much content you drop on it. If it doesn't grab me, I'm not with it. I'm going to put my time into it and keep it moving. If the story doesn't grab me, if it's a single-player story-based game, okay, if it doesn't grab me, I'm going to play it, keep it moving. I don't care how you know how good it looks. It could be gorgeous. So how much time do you really give it? So like leave me personally, if I'm okay. if I'm gonna get and jump into like a story, because I understand some of these games are crazy, right? They're like 10, 20, even like 30 hours or more for right. some of them, right? So me personally, I, I give a game a good, I don't know, maybe the first story part of it, mm -hmm. maybe first level, depending on the type of game it is, to uh, you know, or maybe just if it's just really not well written or you know, even as far as the character, you know, uh, personality, things like that, it's not really grabbing me. You know, some people might only get like five, 10 minutes, you right, know? Right. And, and, and that's just, that's just me. I don't know if you put any more time. Uh, Honestly, my, here's my rule. This has been my rule since the PS2 original Xbox GameCube era. Basically, yeah. since I was evolving and coming into adulthood where all of a sudden I didn't have the time that I had as a child, you know what I mean? Because I had, I was taking on some responsibility. So now at that point, games that I was going to go back and replay, I had to more or less make time for versus I had time when I was coming up. So for me is this, I'm going to get my, I call it the four hour rule. Regardless of the genre, regardless of the game, I'm giving you four hours. Really? If I put, if I told, if I told myself before the game came out, like, okay, I got my eye on that. I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know, see what, see what it's all about. From that point on, I'm giving it four hours. If you can't convey what the story you're trying to tell, or if you cannot give me a reason to come back within four hours, I'm out. Now, does that mean that I'll never go back and replay it again? I, of course not. Let's, let's not be ridiculous. But am I making time for it if you don't grab me within those first four hours? No, not happening. You know, just, just being real, Craig, just not happening. You, you ever spend four hours just creating your character? <laughs> <laughs> trying to get the hair right and the face right like i, I put some time in and the dude still looks weird yeah. but um I, I will say this uh neo too you know since you want to bring that up like <laughs> neo too i mean you don't i put a good it felt crazy. like almost two hours <laughs> before i even started that damn game you can go, go even more generic you just say like NBA, right? With my player, okay. Just trying to get the forehead right now. They, they oh, okay. Are, so are you one of the, Are you one of the uh, face scan guys? Or you just like, look, man, whatever the presets are, I'm gonna find something that looks like I've me. I've seen what face scan does. I'm not doing that. <laughs> but real talk, when it comes down to it, man, uh, no, like that, that you, it sinks in a lot of time with things. Like, but but four hours—that's a long time. There's four games hours, that you can beat in four hours Shit, out there. Man. Um, you know, there was a classic game that called The Order that came out. Mm, and that was a yeah, four six. hour game. Yeah. Um, you know? Yeah. So it's like you could invest four hours and, and that's be like, oh, reason. I hate this game, and then you're done. Right. right. And, and that's like, the reason why, like, is to me, that's more than fair. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You know, if you, if you have, if it's a story based game and you say, okay, well, to get the full experience, you really want to get, you know, it's, it's, you're looking at about 30 to 40 hours, if not yeah. above 40 hours. Really looking forward to Ghost of Tsushima because everything. So, like, put it this way: Ghost of Tsushima grabbed me immediately. I mean, from the opening sequence, and you know, we're not doing spoilers. We know it's it's a fairly uh, new game, so I want you all to you know experience it. Definitely, uh, highly recommend it from from myself. Um, but that game, and from the opening sequence, it grabbed me immediately. I didn't need four hours. I, it took me five minutes to know, like, okay, I'm making time for this. And I'm gonna make sure I'm, I can really do it and play it when I can really dial in, not when I have other things 
you know, going on, not when I'm busy, you know, t- busy to the point where I'll play it when I can and come back when I can. Ghost of Tsushima immediately. I was like, okay, I'm making time for this and I'm making sure it's the right time for this. So that's my point. Like you, you, four hours is more than enough time. And like when I had these conversations with other cats and we've had conversations with other, yeah, ask Brian, yeah, all right? Yeah, yeah. Ask Brian if he's going to put four hours into a game before he decides whether or not, <laughs> you know how he is. Yeah, so, you yeah, know, yeah, he's yeah. not like, so I think to me, it's more than fair. And if you can, however you're, you're aiming to do it, if you can get me within four hours, you got me. If you can't, Either I'm putting you down for good or I'll come back, you know, periodically, you know, when and if I can. So, like, for example, we talked about throwback as a topic. Right. You know, what's an example, a couple of examples, however you want to play this out. What What is an example of a game that you have played where you was like, okay, that was a replayable for me? So, like, you know me pretty well. And when it comes yes. down to it, um, I don't have the best attention span at all. Like, I can't sit through I, Marvel movies, for example. They're great, but I, I, you'll lose me in the first 30 minutes. But we, but we, we, we know for right. damn sure your, what your attention span was. Kobe, when he dropped that 81. Yeah, you had no problem paying attention then. We know that. Kobe. The man's a legend. But regardless, uh, so, like, the games that have really impacted, like, have been my replayable are ones that obviously got me past that point, you know? Right, yes. Um, right. Because, dude, I tell you, like, nowadays, like, I'll jump through, like, PlayStation Now or Xbox Game Pass, and I'll be like, oh, that game looks good. I started up five minutes later. I'm back out the game, going into a different game. Um, you know, and because it's not, you got to be in the mood, right, to right. really get into a certain type of game, um, let alone just gaming in general. Right. Um, you have to be in the right mindset. You have to be have that type of attention and um, drive to really want to be able to put forth the effort because you are taking time out of your life to dedicate to this. True. Um, so, like, when it comes down to it, uh, I'm, I'm going to go all the way back to what I consider a classic mm. to a little more present day. Now, I, I started way back in the day with NES and, you know, for after that, uh, I missed out on Super Nintendo, but then I went to Sega Genesis. But um, the real system that really changed a lot for me um, was the Nintendo 64. Nintendo 64 mm-hmm. was a game changer, right? Yeah. Now, I only had a few games. For, the I had like, 3D. I had like three games in total uh, for the Nintendo 64. One, I can't remember one. It was a real random title. Um, no, it was like Star Wars something or other. Uh, we flew the ships and stuff. Right, then right. there was another one. And then I had, of course, had Mario 64. Um, but my classic and replayable, of course, is Mario Kart 64. Mm. That game has aged well, right? Not Ooh, many games you just hit on something. Well. So you just hit on something. You know, I think a common theme, and we've had our conversations and we've talked, you know, to others as well. And one thing that we we hear on a consistent basis is, does the game age well? Can I play it now? Pick it up, no, no matter when it came out, can I play it now and still get something out of it, you know, the same way I did back, you know, when I first got my hands on it. So that's a good point. Yeah, without a doubt. Like, I don't know if you played the most recent uh, iteration on the Switch, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, the, the Nintendo 64 version of that game is what really set what that game was. You know, yes, there were previous versions, but if you ever try playing them, especially the Nintendo 64 yeah. version, it's everything is like flat on the ground. You Super know, Nintendo, yeah, 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 back in the so, you know, that was the first 3D version. But the reason why that game would age very well is it had a great replay value, right? It didn't really become redundant, even though you're just going through these uh, same set of races, things like that. Um, but, you know, it was a great social game, right? And that, and that was yeah. one of the ways that it, yeah. it impacted me, not on a personal level, but more of a social level, right? It was up to four players. That was when you had four controller ports, right? That's unheard of, you know, um, for most consoles back then. So you were able to play with, uh, you know, three other friends. And what's really great is, uh, you know, doing sleepover, just having friends or whatever. It was just a game that anybody, regardless of how much they really got to play games themselves or if they even had games at all right. at their own individual homes, uh, was able to really get into and play alongside you without having to learn some crazy buttons. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and that's the one uh, going into age well they've kept it very consistent over the years pick up and play man you just you know pick up and play it is not yeah. it's not designed to be too complicated nor is it too complicated exactly you know what I mean? just get up pick up and yep. play and just have some damn fun with and it. nintendo had something really great with the 
way they they really evolved it over the years. They just made minor adjustments, right? right? Added more level or new characters, um, you know, or a battle uh, version and mode in the game and things like that. So they add a lot more to it over the years, but they still kept it true to the original, you know. And that that's one thing I really do respect for them for doing. Um, and I mean, that's one of their pride and joys, right? Mm. So definitely, man, Mario Kart. Uh, that from back in the day, even to the current version on Nintendo, uh, no, I'm sorry, Nintendo Switch, uh, really great experience. And now, since we're older, obviously, being able to play with kids and things yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. sharing those same experiences and building the memories and things like that, and just seeing the enjoyment that they're having, uh, you know, is, is very impactful for a lot of people. You know, everybody wants to see their children happy. They yeah, want to man. see them thrive and they want to see them succeeding, right? Of course, you of know. Course. And a game like that is is easy for anybody to pick up, age, whatever. Right. They can pick it up, get into it, but they can also be successful in it you know right and they don't have to get to be you know discouraged from losing or whatever who cares you know they, they know they can just start a race back over it's two three minutes and then they're back in a new one and they can try to win again right so and, and that uh, that was uh one of my big ones when it comes down to a, a great replayable that from a social aspect that has really in my opinion brought uh friends together to families together mm -hmm. you know uh yeah it has aged well because i mean i think um you might know the numbers better than I do, but like the average gamer's age is like what mid thirties or yeah. like mid to high thirties. Yeah, that's the average age of a gamer, quote unquote, based off you know the numbers. So sounds about that, right. That's yeah. that's like us pretty much, and that's in, and in that age range, everybody has kids, you know, and that's just going to be one that you're going to see in a lot of households, you know. And I think that's one reason why they always keep bringing it back over and yeah. over again. You know, I know we've joked about, you know, like Mario 20 and, you know, <laughs> Mario Kart, whatever. They're they're up to eight, but we know there have been more iterations. Right, eight. right. Um, you know, and it's just a, it's just one of those really great games. I'm sure you have a social version of a game that has kind of impacted you. I would say this, man. Um, and I'm taking it all the way back to as far as my throwback, my replayable. Similar to what you were saying, you know, started out with the original Nintendo. Super Mario Brothers 3 was the first time on the original NES that I knew that, okay, you know, I... Is that I the like one with the world? It was. Yeah, where you the, could, okay. The first time, I think it was the first time where you can actually get different power-ups and he could fly with the rat tail, you know, yeah, that one, right? Raccoon. The raccoon tail, there you go. Um, that was the first time I, I picked up a game. It's, the mo it's my first memory of games. But it was one of those, okay, I picked up, picked it up, played it. You know, when it was time to go, it was time to go. When I was there, fine, it was yeah. cool. It didn't grab me. Um, the first game that truly grabbed me was Street Fighter II Hyper Fighter. First played it at the arcade, and then I got it for the Sega Genesis. Uh, you know, when I got old enough to where I can actually, you know, go and, you know, buy my own system. Was that on both? Genesis and uh, I think Super Nintendo? Super Nintendo had a Street Fighter 2, but I think it was called Championship so Edition. I always wonder about a game like that, because fighting games are a little bit more complex with the buttons, but when you look at back in the day, a Genesis controller had three buttons, right? It did. It, then, it started out with three, then it went six. Nintendo had four and then two more, so it had six also. Right, right. So yeah, man, you know, Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting in particular was the first time that, you know, a game grabbed me. And I was like, you know what, I'm you know, put it this way, before I would play a game and if it was time to go, it was just time to go. Okay, that was fun. Yeah. Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting was the first time where when it was time to go, I didn't want to go. I wanted to, it, I, I wanted to get better. You know, it was a learning curve. It wasn't just, you know, button mashing, right? Yeah. It wasn't the pick up and play like Mario Kart succeeds because it's meant to be pick up and play. Street Fighter 2 was not. It's the Street Fighter franchise from the very beginning, really starting with 2 on, is not pick up and play. You can do that. And I know people, you know, do that. But if you're really trying to get the most out of that game and what that game really can be, it's about learning strategy, technique, the, you know, the button, the, the uh, button, you know, presses and directions are basically just how to get special moves off. Right. Um, so that was the first game that grabbed me. Who'd but you mean? say again, who's you mean? Gal, man. Gal was my guy. When you're talking about the OG Street Fighter, Gal was my main. But that, that was, was, and that, that, he was a soldier, right? He was. Yeah, because I would have whooped you with you. Know, Come on, man. <laughs> just saying. The, the man with a thousand slaps, the fat man. Sonic Boom. Big, that was yeah, a, the, the, the biggest character in the game, slapping everybody. You couldn't do nothing about <laughs> He's it, the man. most disrespectful person in there. He didn't care. 
E Honda, man, you know. But um, that was the first game that grabbed me. But the, the title I'm going to really dive into, and you know, just being real, you know, with you and you know, for the people out there, um, and my OGs out here know what I'm talking about. Killer Instinct. Killer. Both fighting games. Okay. Yeah, fighting games. So fighting games, if you haven't guessed by now, is you know my favorite genre, and it probably always will be. And it started, it was the it was the genre that brought me into games that made me a you know air quotes gamer. Um, and it's still my favorite genre. Love all types of you know games, uh, RPGs, action platformers, some shooters, if done right, but the fighting game genre. And it was Street Fighter 2 that grabbed me and kept me into the gaming realm or brought me in the gaming realm and kept me there and Killer Instinct. And here was the difference. With Street Fighter 2, when I got in the lab and really was determined to learn, especially the charge characters versus just to show those a la, like the half circle guys, a la Ryu, Ken, um, later on Sagat. Um, I, once I got in the lab and I was determined to, you know, figure them out and then be my best with them, it came to me fairly easily as long as I put the time in. But a couple of years later, I want to say 1994, people out there, correct me if I'm wrong, um, when Killer Instinct dropped, it was the first time where you had to learn multiple combinations of, you know, half circle here, this button press there, yeah. to extend your combos, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was extended combos, and it was yeah, like- the more, some really crazy, some, like 20-button Man, moves, Orchid there? and Cinder were my two that I locked in on. Yeah, um, I just punched a kick in that game. I don't really know how. And that was the thing. It was so technically different from Street Fighter Two. That it was the first time, and at that time also, you know, I was still looking, I was still, you know, thinking about playing ball, but I, but I kept being told I wasn't, you know, tall enough. Yeah. I was trying to, you know, I was dabbling in football, but I was told I wasn't quite big enough. I was the, you know, little skinny kid, big ears, right? So, you know, it was those two sports were my first two like passions that I really wanted to try, but I kept being told shit that was out of my control. Okay, you got to get taller. Okay, if I, all right. I'm keep hearing that. If I could, I would, right? I was literally the guy that would like get up on the arm bar and stretch thinking yeah, I'm gonna get taller, yeah, right? Yeah. But it just wasn't happening. Um, I was at the time, metabolism was crazy. So I'm eating, you gotta get bigger for football. You gotta get bigger. So I'm eating, 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 ain't shit happening. So, you know, I was really kind of down. And also at that age, I was, what was I like uh, 10, 11 at the time. So, you know, I'm sitting there. Childhood, right there. Man, 10 look, years man. old, gain weight, lose Woo. weight, get taller. Right. You know, I wish I was a little bit taller. Yo, yo, I wish I was a baller. You know, yeah, that's middle school at that point. Man, listen. What is that? That's like fifth grade. Fifth, sixth grade, man. So that was that when you're, that's you know, you're growing up and you're coming up, you know, you're trying yeah. to figure out like who you are. Yeah. And you want the reassurance of being good at, you know, something that you're passionate about and in both of those areas. And boxing was coming into my life, but it wasn't what boxing has become to me now. Gotcha. You understand what I'm saying? So at that time, it was like, you know what, man, forget this. I'm just going to, you know, hit the arcade whenever I have some quarters and, you know, get, get in the lab. And Street Fighter, you know, at that point for a couple of years now had been the one safe haven where I knew I could like dive in. Yeah, gotcha. And I was like, OK, I, this is something I'm passionate about that I'm good at. And as long as I just put the work in, I can control how good I am. Yeah. All right. But Killer Instinct was the, you know, at that time. I was like, okay, let me go ahead. I'm like, I see Street Fighter over there, but people, you know, my guys was telling me about Killer Instinct. Let me try. And it was the first time, especially in the fighting game realm, that I what it, it didn't come naturally to me. It didn't come easily to me. Yeah. So I was, you know, Killer Instinct was sort of like a, I was thinking it was going to be a nice distraction from what I was dealing with as far as just figuring myself out, you know, yeah. at that age. And it became more of a distraction. It became more of a frustration because it was the first time. Now, wait a minute. I always am good when I put time yeah. in the lab. And it wasn't the case. So, you know, I'm frustrated there. I'm frustrated with everything else. But I would say this. The main reason why Killer Instinct stands out over 20 years later for me is because it taught me. At some point, I remember I was uh, playing. It was this cat that would come from, a, you know, from another school. I knew him. He stayed in my neighborhood. But he went to another school. And he used to just give me the business. You know what I mean? His guy, yeah, he, he uh, his guy was Saber Wolf. If all my Killer Instinct fans out there, you know who I'm talking about. His Saber Wolf, he would just give everybody the business, canceling Christmas for everybody. And one day he saw like me really getting upset to the point where you ever get upset, not that you're like crying, like crying, like, you know, like you, like you soft, but you crying because like you're so mad. He pulled me to the side. He was like, you know, Sean, he was like, man, A, it's a game. And B, 
you come here and every time you play, man, like I know what you're going to do. You do the same thing. You just got it in your head. It's going to work. And you keep doing the same thing, determined to make it work. But it's not working, man. He was like, come up with some other, you know, make some other shit. And we can like, I need some competition. And he was, and he pulled me to the side. So it wasn't like he was trying to say it, you know, yeah. cause there's some other kids, he was some other cats around. He wasn't saying it to be a jerk about the shit, but he was just telling me like, yo man, like I, I've seen you play other fighters and you play different ways. Why are you playing this game this same way? Come yeah. up with something different, man. Like, I, I can't tell you like how often people nowadays still need that same conversation. Man, shh. I mean, I, like, like I, I told had a you, conversation with my son like, and, and among many others. We talking kids and adults, man. It, you know, we I mean, all we it, all need that conversation every yeah, now. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's just like it, it's games. Some some things are, are are challenging, and games are. I mean, a lot of them are made to present a challenge. Some right. of them are just made to make you just get frustrated by all means. Demon Souls, go ahead. Dark Souls, Demon Souls, all those. I don't even touch those games for that reason. Mm. But yeah, I mean, when it comes down to it, it it's you have to improve. You have to get better, right? Um, like I play a lot of Rambo, right? And it's so easy to die in that game and it can become very frustrating. Because mm-hmm. once you die, you're out the match. Siege, yeah. You know? When you're um, done, you're done. That's you it. Know? And, and people I would play would just get frustrated. You know, oh, this game's stupid. You know, how do, how, how do they shoot me through a wall or whatever? Why, how do they get, get me in the head? So whatever. And it's just like, Dude, I used to be that bad too, you know, but when you just stick with it and you keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing, you're going to learn the rhythm. You're going to learn the methods and how the game plays to the point where it becomes not as frustrating. You learn from your mistakes. And that's what I, I've, I've tried to, you know, teach out to my kids who are, who get frustrated with games from mm-hmm. time to time. And, I'm, and I'll, I don't know if you did this with uh, Killer Instinct, but we want you want to walk away from a loss learning something right, right. It's, it's not about right. just yes oh that's bs and then and then putting all that excuse on other things it's like no it's you did something wrong now what did you do wrong what what can, what did you need to change and make it a little bit uh a little bit different to make the odds more in your favor I'm not saying mm-hmm. it will completely change it all the outcome altogether but it's so easy to just pass blame on to, oh, the game glitched or, you know, they're, they're cheating. I, oh, my gosh. I think with online games, people call, call that out more than anything else. People are cheating. Spamming, bro. Why they're, are you spamming, they're bro? They're hacking. They're cheating. They're doing all this stuff. And then, in, but in reality. You're a bot, man. Yes, it's possible. But reality of it is they're just better. Right. And are they better by nature? No. They just stuck with it. They, they didn't pick up the controller and were just good. Right. You know, just like Killer Instinct, right? You don't just pick it up and you're good. You know, you you have to learn how the game handles, how each character handles. I think that's a big thing a lot of people don't understand. It's just like, oh, I'll just be this random person. It's like, well, no, they're each thing, each person is different. Each, each character is each different. Each character man. is different. Each character um, is different, yeah. And true. I don't know if you've seen, like, uh, people play some of those games competitively, man, but they have it down to the frame rate. They know exactly how many frames per second it and takes they, to throw a punch. There and you go. your counter takes longer to, for a frame rate. And they know they can beat you every single time, every no matter what you do. T- it's, it's intricate, it. man. And again, I think Killer Instinct, now Street Fighter has evolved as far as the combo systems and you know all of that stuff. But Killer Instinct, you know, for me, it, it was the first time where, especially after, uh, and I'll never forget that, you know, Chris was his name, man. I'll never forget that. And I ran into him actually a few years ago randomly when I was uh, at E3. Um, he actually was living out there in L.A., ran into him on Vine, and, you know, we caught up and everything like that. I remember that conversation, brought it up to him, and yeah. I was like, man, I appreciate it. And he remembered, too. Yeah. And the thing from that moment on, I was like, okay, Sean, like, there are a difference between reasons and excuses. And at this point, you passed reasons a couple of weeks ago, fighting, you know what I mean, playing against this dude. Yeah. Now you're just making excuses. You got to have a counter move. Have a counter move to a counter move. Like, figure out different ways to, and first of all, understand the characters that you have and figure out different ways to win. And I started to get good. And then I went from good to, you know, not to brag, but great with that game. And then what happened was I took that attitude back to football took that attitude and particularly back to basketball. And I was like, you know what, you know, right now, based on my size, everybody keeps saying like, you're too small and I'm not necessarily getting the rock, but I was like, you know, one thing, and one thing that everybody respects is a guy that gets out there and plays D. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So 
I got out on the court and I started playing D and I started getting my stripes there to the point where they was like, we don't care if you know what I mean, you know, little, little man, little man small. They was like, hey, he out there, he shutting his guy down. His guy ain't getting nothing. This yeah. guy ain't bringing it up. So, you know, let's get him some shots. And it was just a different kind of mentality that I took back. And then I'm, that transitioned me towards boxing, which has been, you know, my number one love since. So that game as a replayable was not only a great game, and I just loved how that game, you know, how that game laid everything out, but it was also a moment where instead of always going to games as a, health, as a air quotes, healthy distraction, it was what I learned from that game in particular that I was able to carry over to me. And then, you know, I was able to transit And to this day, the lessons I learned from that game, either in other games that have come out similar since, or just in life yep. has been applicable, man. Right. So yeah, that's definitely killer instinct yeah. has a special space in my heart, man. And, no and, doubt. And, and, I'll, and I'll let you know my other one in a moment, but hey, um, I don't know, but like one thing that I've learned other than, you know, just trying to walk away from each, you know, loss as a learning experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're gonna have your days, right? I know I talk about Siege a lot because that's just because well, that's what I'm playing right now. Right. It's not one of my replayables. Don't get me wrong, I love the game, but there's days when you're just off, you know. And then you know you can't be on it all day. Yeah, Athletes rhythm, go man. through it's it. The rhythm. Professional gamers go through it. Right. Everybody's gonna go through it. You have off, um, but also there's times when it's just like you know all right, I've lost you know two or three matches in a row, right? And and then you feel that frustration getting with you, right? Um, so one of the biggest things I learned is just stop, mm. take a break, go, go step outside, walk around, go eat something, just take a break, calm yourself back down, get your mind right, get refocused. Right, right. Um, you know, yeah. and, and, and when you go back to it, you have a whole different mentality at that point. Because the thing is, is that, you know, that can become overbearing for a lot of people, right? They, they can't think straight. They're just frustrated. Like you said, they're making excuses mm -hmm. versus, uh, and, and then it's very easy to become blinded to what your flaws may be when you're making these excuses. So when you can have a more clear mind and you can go back into the situation, it does make a big difference. It know? does. Yeah, man, and yeah. you can easily, you know, communicate better with people or, uh, you know, just make an overall better impact, a more positive impact, um, whether it's an online game with your team or, you know, just for yourself, you know, you're making a more, more positive impact and you learn and you're teaching yourself something right there. Right. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that that's something interesting. I don't know if you played the. What are your thoughts of the new, the new, new killer instincts? You know, it's. We talked about when it, does a game age well and does a game grab you? And unfortunately for me, the new Killer Instinct tried it on the uh, Xbox, man, and it did neither. And I spent, you know about my four hour rule. I, I, I almost immediately was let down, but I said, you know what? I, this has been on my radar, let me give it a chance. Yeah. Four hour rule applies to any game that I've, that's on my radar before it comes out. So I gave it four hours and one of the great things about Street Fighter, and I keep coming back to Street Fighter, but you know, but one of the great things about it is as the series, the linear series from two and all the versions of two, you know how Street Fighter is, yeah, yeah, yeah. three, four, and now with five, it has evolved. It's yes. done a great job of evolving, but also being familiar enough with where it came from. Well, it's the like Mario Kart, right? Yeah, you go, exactly. You talk about that, exactly. They kept everything true to what it was, but they, they just added new characters, new levels, and and, and new mechanics. You know, man, just new ways to fight. You know, the parent yeah, from the yeah, parrying yeah, system yeah, to yeah, air, yeah. you know, air, all that stuff, right? So, you know, but with this killer instinct, I, I didn't get, I didn't, it didn't capture the vibe, the feel. And just the way that the original Killer Instinct played, I got none of that, unfortunately, from uh, from this one, man. And again, that is a key difference between a game that, you know, can be replayable for you versus a game that doesn't. It just, in some way, shape, or form, it, you know, no matter what your definition is, if it doesn't grab you, you know, you know, it, you'll give it extra time, but you know, it, just in life, like, there, you know, when it comes to certain things, you kind of almost know immediately whether it, you're with it or you're not. Oh, I learned immediately with that game. I get, you gave before. I gave four minutes. As soon as I tried to, <laughs> I tried to select Orchid, and then they wanted money for it. I was like, "Why did I buy all the cash?" Oh, was, listen, oh, my, good old microtransactions, like, boy. Like, like if I'm gonna like, get the game, give me all the, give me the, the damn game, man. Like, what is this? Come on, like, it, yeah, it's frustrating. Man. Yeah, I hear you, man. But, you know nah, what I mean? So, but yeah, so that's cool. But um, yeah, man. When it comes down to my other one, I know you asked for a couple from me. 
you know, I told you don't want to hit me on the more social aspect of things, right. uh, more on the personal aspect, a game that created a, a more unique experience than any other game I've ever played before uh, is the full Uncharted franchise. Mm. Whether you're talking about one, two, three, uh, four, Lost All Legacy. Them. All of them. Um, Golden Abyss. Shout out to the Vita. Golden Abyss. Shout never, out to the Vita. Never did. Different company, but the same type of experience to an extent. Right. Um, but, you know, Amy Hennig was the writer for the original three, you know, yes. and she did a phenomenal job writing that story. Uh, the characters had depth, you know, the great, visually the game looked great, of course, but they did a great job bringing personality to the, the to the characters and the graphics, right? As yes. opposed to just seeing somebody move um, and things. And, and they did a lot as far as character development throughout one, two, and three, right? Mm -hmm. now, I'm, you played them all, right? Oh, yeah. So when you look at the first oh, yeah. one, right? And, and the first one, you know, obviously you're, you're a protagonist, Nathan Drake, and you know, you're this fortune hunter, treasure hunter guy. Um, you, you meet this girl, Elena Fisher, who's also, uh, who's, a uh, it's like a news or a journalist. She's a journalist. Yes. Thank you. Journalist. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and you meet Sully, who's her, his, uh, his mentor to an extent. Right. Um, you know, and, and, you know, they're just going through an adventure, but then, you know, over time, the relationships evolve, right? You, you learn about the backstory between Nathan and uh, his mentor, so, you know, and how that, how they met when he was younger and how he kind of groomed him to be, you know, very knowledgeable, yeah, and, you know, things like that. And then, you know, by Uncharted 4, you know, him and Elena Fisher are married, right? They have a house together. I yeah. think they even have a kid together, maybe. I don't know. Yep, yep, totally but regardless, yeah. like you over the, that course of one, two, and three, and four, you see their relationships evolve over time, especially him and Elena, right? And Uncharted 2, you know, you saw a little bit of turmoil when Chloe was brought in to mm -hmm. be like the side chick that, yeah, you know, yeah. is flirting with uh, with Nathan. But Becky, you know, with the good exactly, hair. But Elena's yes. not really feeling it, you know, <laughs> and, you know, she brings it up multiple times, you know. Yeah. It's, it's just a, it's a unique experience because nothing really uh, story driven or a story based game has really had that type of depth or development mm. over the years. I mean, there's been attempts, like you've seen like games like uh, like Tomb Raider or Bioshock that have had sequels, right? But there was no co consistent, you know, building with the character relationships over True. each individual game on, like this had. Right. Um, and that's one thing that I really did appreciate. And then when they had Lost Legacy come out where you played as Chloe Frazier and Nadine Ross from uh, 3 and 4, um, you know, you, you already knew who, to, who they were. The familiarity you, with yeah, the, you there had you a go. Full, you there knew you their go. backgrounds. You knew exactly who they were. Um, and it really kind of uh, gets you more in, involved with the game, right? Um, and it makes you just a, a more enjoyable experience overall. And that's one thing that I loved about Uncharted from a personal level is, you know, whether you have different things going on in your life or, you know, you're just right. stressed or you had a long day. It was just one of those games where you could just turn it on and it just brings you into a whole nother world, a whole different reality. And you just get sucked into it to a point where, you know, you just forget about all the other nonsense, the BS that's going on in your life. And this is just where your focus is. Right. 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 And, you know, and then you get to that point where, you know, before you know, it's like 11 o'clock and then you I'm going to do one more level. 12 mm -hmm. o'clock. Oh, let me just do this puzzle real quick. I'll be there in five minutes. Five exactly. hours later, I'll be and, there in five you know, minutes. And it's just Go on here right with it. And I, honestly, man, I think I've gone through each one of those games, all four of them, at least four or five times. Yeah. Um, wow. Wow. Yeah. It's just it's just a really great experience. Um, and, and in, in my opinion, it makes you really appreciate what goes into a game. You know, very few games are like that. But when you think, when you look at the art, the, the scripts, the character development, everything that was involved, and even the soundtrack. I mean, they brought in the whole orchestra to make a soundtrack mm -hmm. for that game. Yes. Um, Naughty Dog did a great thing with it that wasn't like anything else out there. Um, you know, and then they brought that with The Last of Us, right? Last of Us, great game. I don't know. As a parent, I'm sure that first <laughs> five minutes hits you just like it would oh, hit any other man. parent. That uh, was a very powerful moment yeah. in the beginning of The Last of Us, right? Yeah, and especially as a parent. As a parent. Yeah, it would have hit me regardless, but yeah, man. As not gonna a, put any as a spoilers father, out there for anybody that hasn't. I mean, to be fair, the game came out eight years ago. You should have had an opportunity, right? But right. 
it's just one of those things where it's just like it, this is an experience unlike any other in a video game. Yeah, you know. But that that that's one of my other uh, my other main replayable that I can always go back to and never really get tired of it. Um, you know, I just enjoy the overall experience and, uh, that I get out of it. Absolutely, man. <laughs> And you know what, you you were going, to, especially when you brought up Last of Us, you were going into, you know, where I was leaning towards for another example for a completely different reason. You know, Killer Instinct had and always will have a special place in my heart because of where I was at that time and what that game taught me about, you know, how to approach games and how to approach life. And now I'm going to hit you with something a little bit more recent, man. God of War. PlayStation 4, yes, the new one, you know, that, and obviously coming off the heels of the first four, particularly one and three for me, God of War 3, PS3 is a top 25, always has, always will be game for me of all time, period. That includes any console, PC, whatever, right? When, you know, you heard about what they were doing with God of War, what Carl and his team, Carl Barbrock and his team were doing with God of War, and it was like, okay, this is interesting. You saw some game trailers. You knew they were introducing Atreus. And at at this point in 2018, I'm a father now. I'm I'm grown. I'm a father, you know, full-blown adulting, right? And I felt like, okay, this I'm I'm going to really be able to connect with this game, just kind of seeing how that relationship was going to evolve. But I didn't know how deep they were going to go with it. Boy, right? You know what I mean? And how Kratos, and think, at that point, Kratos... As great as the, you know, for, particularly the first three, and you could throw Ascension in there if you if you so choose, were, it was really about the combat and about the, the fight, the action sequences that really stood out. The story, obviously, it was the mythology aspect to it, but let's just say, like, okay, I don't know about you. I don't, in my God of War discussions previous to the one that came out in 2018, the new one on PS4, when you were talking God of War, you weren't talking story. You were talking, I mean, just well, yeah. straight brutality. That's what it was getting known in for. There it just was wrecking known for shit. just blood and gore and ripping apart enemies. And that's what, you know, like you said, but no, I mean, God of War, I just recently replayed it during, a couple of months ago during this whole quarantine, you know, yes, uh, since yes. I had some time to burn. Um, but it does, there's a lot more story. Like I could tell you more about that story than the previous iteration. Absolutely. So and for them to... Again, think about it, man. You're taking a proven formula and you're bringing a whole new take on it. Yeah. And that's risky. I mean, we know that the reality of the situation is, in my personal opinion, as we've, you know, gone into console generation, console generation, console generation, and do some new games, it's becoming much more difficult to be willing to go out there because, I mean, these games, they, they cost a shit ton of money now. It's a lot of pressure to deliver, right? It costs, it costs money to make them. We need to make money back. So I feel like innovation and originality and also just you know, daring to do something different, I think has sometimes has uh, suffered as we as a result of, okay, no, we know this formula works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So for them to take a proven formula, a very commercially successful formula that they had uh, established with the original four or three, however you want to put it, to go in that direction, it was, I think it's, it's a once in a life, it's a, one of the cons- one of the finding games that we've that we've seen on the PS4. For me personally, knowing how you know Kratos as rough as he was around the edges and how hard it was for him to really connect with his son to you know reconcile with what happened with you know with the with his mom with the sons with Atreus's mom and really just reconcile with what it made him at that point and also understand like I've got to work on things about myself to make myself better because I've got to be better for him. Well, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, some people look at, oh, I can't be hard on my kids. You know, I can't, you know, I don't want them to put them down. And when you look at God of War, right, he, he's constantly tough on them. On right? him. He's on constantly him. About the, everything. Sometimes you're just like, he's just a dick of a dad. Right, right. But, you know, you learn throughout the game, like, he always has his son's back. He's always looking out for his son's best interest you know throughout you know through that i mean i don't want to get too much into it but you know that's one thing that but, you'll you easily take away and i know i was i mean you know coming from a situation where i didn't have a day in day out you know father to have a blueprint to go off of when i became you know a yeah. father and you know my son came into my life the champ when he came into my life you know there was a lot of things i didn't know so for me it was like i'm going to 
initially pairing him based on the environment I came from, which is, you know, we're going to do it hard. And you know that, hey, whether you understand or not, you know, down the line, you're going to understand how dad always had your best interest at heart, much like Kratos. But also much like Kratos, as that game evolved, I've evolved to say, again, we talked about it, you know, killer instinct. You have to learn how to approach things in different ways. You got to learn how to read things in different ways and have more than just a, you got to have more than one pitch. You know, you, it can't just be a fastball down the middle every damn time with everything. You have to learn how to evolve. So I really connect. I mean, first of all, they really introduced a great story without sacrificing what made God of War famous, which is the great action scenes and just yeah. a great, you know what I mean? That whole, so it was a, a evolution of the game. What did we talk about with Killer Instinct, unfortunately, at least in my view, that it just, it went so far away from what made it great that it was just no familiarity, right? There was still the familiarity of what you loved about God of War and was elevated by a great story. It was the first time where you can be, you know, talking to, you know, you know, anybody in a crew, you'd be talking to your, you know, your homegirls, your homeboys, and you would about God of War. It was the first time you can talk as much about the story as about the actual combat. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, and again, like you, I've gone back and replayed that game three times. And it's been it's been fresh every single time. It was I, at no point in the three you know uh, run backs three times I've run it back since have I been like, all right, I wish I could just get through this to get to you know this part where I was really going back. Like no, it's fresh every time. It's yeah. uh, I enjoy it the same way every time. Again, replayable because the story grabbed me, the action grabbed me, and everything about what they were looking to do with that game um, was an A plus for me, man. So so yeah, and I mean on the reverse side of it. Uh -oh. I know we talk about a lot of AAA titles, but yes, I mean I've had some really great experiences with in, with indie games, mm. independent games out there. Um, you know, one game that I played years ago back on PlayStation Three, but I will always remember the story just because I was like, this game is heartbreaking. Is oh, get out! Um, is Papa Leno? Ooh, <laughs> I'm sure you played it, right? <laughs> Papo Enyo was yeah, a really great yeah. game. And um, yeah. just to give you kind of a synopsis on it, because I don't think you really play it nowadays anymore. Right. Um, you know, this whole time, you know, you're this kid who's running from this this giant monster this mm -hmm. whole time going through puzzles. Mm -hmm. And you're going, and then by the end of the game, you learn that the monster is just his imagination of his father. And you see, like, these yeah. statues of his father That's right. beating him and young. And it's just like, damn, like, yeah. this is some heavy shit right here. Like, this is, and... But, you know, on the reverse side, you think about, you know, makes you reflect on yourself as a parent, you know, well, am I, is this how my child ever views me? You know, if, exactly. if, if I, if I lose my cool or if I, you know, things like that, uh, you know, I don't think either of us have ever actually put our hands on our kids, you know, that's just not us, but regardless, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just a really tough one. And then another one. I just, makes you think, man. Yeah. And then another one I just played was Rhyme. I don't know if you ever played Rhyme. You know what? I haven't gotten into it, but I've heard heard some great things, man. Really heard great, great game. Again, it's another puzzle platformer type of game. Um, you know, where a kid's just trying to get to the top of this tower, but then in the end, I'm gonna spoil it because I back to play. But it, is you learn that the 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 kid w was dead, you know, and he was just trying to find his way back home, you know, right. and that's the whole. And, and like you see at the end, you know, his dad crying in his room and stuff, and it's just like, man, these are like really heavy indie games that people put a lot of time into. And they put together a really great, impactful story that's very different from anything else out there. Right. Um, but they don't get the recognition that they deserve. That's the main reason I want to throw them out there is because, uh, you know, there's a very wide range of games out there. Yes. And a lot of times, you know, we can get stuck in, you know, the repetitiveness of, oh, well, I only play shooters or I only play Madden or I only play 2K. I only do this. True. Very um, true. Yeah. But, in the end, we're missing out on a lot of the experiences uh, that are put together for us, the consumer, to you know, to hear and and the story that has been put together. Um, so that's where you know I, I don't know where the future of gaming is really going to go. I know uh, it feels like a lot of us going multiplayer. You know, online uh, is like yeah. the main thing. You see your big games out there are. Warzone, right? Right now, currently, Warzone, Fortnite, Pub, G, uh, Siege. Yeah, Siege is definitely. Uh, and it's crazy because Siege has been out for some years now, but it's they've got a ten-year plan in place for it. Though. So um, they're doing a damn good job at that. Clearly, 
Yeah, it's damn a, good the job. The first multi-billion dollar game for Ubisoft. But anyway, mm. um, but that's just where it feels like a lot of things are going. Uh, okay, so, so you know what? That's a good point. I don't know like, if we're going to lose out on a lot of this. You know, so that's actually a good point because it seems like, you know, there's that there are different tides, you know, as far as, you know, what, what, what it is that the in- industry, you know, is putting out for us. Yeah. And has that, you know, as we bring it to our, our final topic here, um, you know, evolution, like has your, I, I'm, obviously it has, your definition of what you deem to be a replayable game for you has obviously evolved, just like you've evolved. But how much of that is just simply your definition being from, okay, this is just how I see it. As I've, you know, as I've grown and evolved, or is it also that, or is it also the fact that, you know, what, well, based on what the industry is, is really kind of putting out from console generation to console generation, I've kind of had to evolve my definition of replayable with it. Is it, is it the industry or is it always going to be like, no, my view of a replayable will be from me. Like, how do you, how do you balance that? What do you think? I don't know. That's a hard question right there. I mean, the, the, the industry is always going to be focused on one thing, and that's uh, obviously it's a business right. and things like that. So they're going to go to try to, you know, go towards familiarity for people and to fill their lifestyles. Uh, when it comes down to the future of just storytelling games, you know, the Uncharted series, I think, has pretty much run its course for the most part. Mm. Uh, but Last of Us has really kept taking the torch uh, from them very well with Last of Us from eight years ago to Last of Us Two, which it recently hit. Yes. Um, so you know, there's still going to be a niche crowd for story-based games that are these huge AAA titles that companies are willing to take a chance on, and I do appreciate that with Sony, regardless that that you know they're willing to put forth you know the necessary money because games aren't cheap to make. I mean, no. you're talking about thir- 20, 30 million dollars. These things cost more than movies. Movie studio budgets <laughs> now for games. You know? Yeah. Um to make and they're taking a chance on it, you know, whether they make uh, their money back or take a loss. But and it I don't know how much longer it's gonna last though, right? Original ideas. There's a lot of originally out originality out there. Right. You know, everybody has their own creative side. Everybody, everybody has their own cre- uh, artistic ways as far as whether it be drawing, painting, whatever. Um, and a lot of this goes unnoticed and underutilized, you know. So when, uh, when it comes down to it, I, I do hope that there is a, a way for a lot of these experiences to continue, whether it be with God of War, which has pretty much run its course as well mm-hmm. at this well, point. I mean, you don't want to drag something out like Halo or anything offense yeah i mean and, and i would say at least with god of war they've at least with the way that they left it first of all like undiscovered you know what i mean yeah. uh, wars and the story I, I would say god of war actually i would actually disagree i don't god of war it had ran its course as far as you know what you were getting from it previous to this so, very last one but since this last one i think that they set it up well to to give you another run especially to watch how atreus evolves so going from the greek mythology of from what originally was the right. Norse mythology yeah. of what it currently is, make you think they could just start a whole. I mean, because he's immortal technically. Yeah, so he'll never I die. think that they could, and I think that Atreus. It's like we saw him literally. You know, he evolved from a boy that was just constantly, you know, getting shit from his dad. But his dad had, you know, but but Kratos had his best interest at heart. But you saw it toward the end. I mean, with the way he was just, you know, carrying himself and being more uh, uh, his character arc. Yeah. And he was established as a character that we talked about relatability, like with Chloe and Nadine by the time we got to Lost Legacy. The way that they were established, there was relatability that, that brought you back. I believe that Atreus was set up to where, like, okay, I want to see how he But it's not going to hit the same. Like, yeah, Lost know. Legacy didn't hit the same as the first four on charts. And Naughty Dog knew that when they made it. Yeah. Um, just like if you buy a God of War game and you don't see Kratos in there, Dominant. it's True. not going to be the same experience. You can you can put any story God arc around a Robin or a Nightwing, you know? but if you don't see Batman, it's just it's just not like when, with like with Halo, quite right? the same. Yeah, when Halo doesn't have Master Chief in it, it's it's not going to do as well. True. It, it, people want to be able to recognize and play as their favorite iconic characters and things like that. But like we said, a lot of them are starting to run their course. They're starting to become repetitive. And at the same time, I want them to run their course. I don't want them to keep dragging and charting yeah. out more than what it should. You know, leave it on a high note. 
Um, you know, because there's something to be said about leaving the stage right on time, yeah. or if not, a bit too early, but never too late. And that's the thing, like Halo, it's a great game, but Halo Three is still like their pride and joy. Right. But they kept on going with Halo Four, Halo Five. I think they're up there. Reach seven or eight. was the so, like the last sort of like, and that was 2010. Uh, right, uh, so, yeah, Three was 2007. Um, so it's just like when you you, you kind of gotta get that that feel that okay, my stuff's kind of right. dying out, and we need to find something to do. But it feels like a lot of companies are struggling right now because people are afraid to invest in something. Yeah, new. invest in something. It's like investing in something new versus investing yep. in what you know. And you know what? Unfortunately, and we it, you know you just highlighted a few examples there where when you become afraid to invest in something new and you just go with what you know, all of a sudden you have a game that starts out as a clear replayable become, you know, I mean, a non-replayable. And if you fuck around, it becomes unplayable if you just keep, you know, shuffling the same thing out. It's, just, it's, it's less memorable or it just, you, you know, you're getting the same thing over and over. Or when you try to, you know, do something so different, drastically different than what the formula was at the beginning, it just doesn't click. So, and I mean, yeah, man, good point. Noise, like, and probably upset people. In my opinion, like I don't really get what the big difference is between buying 2K every single year, <laughs> buying Madden every single year. Like if you can sit there, right, and you can tell me straightforward what the difference between Call of Duty multiplayer. I get Warzone. That's separate. That's, right, that's right. free to play. But I'm talking about the, the, the standard team deathmatch of Call of Duty. What's really different every single year when it comes out? Shit, There's man. not much. It's right. A lot of it is just a, the same thing. Watch, rinse, and repeat. It's huh? just a... a you know, and uh, it, it's what we've become comfortable with, you know, and now it's kind of sad because don't get me wrong, uh, you know, 2K is a great game or, you know, and but, you know, same thing with Madden, Madden's a great game, but Madden will never hold its value to 2K, NFL 2K5, my personal favorite, when you had T.O. on the cover Ooh. back then. I mean, that, yeah. it was a great game. Yeah. I, yeah. And, and that's the thing. It's just like, I, I, and I don't know, and this is like my, like my conspiracy slash thought, uh -oh. that with everybody just investing in the same games over and over again, is keeping companies from really expanding. True. And trying something new. I, I agree. I um, agree. Yeah. You know, because they're like, well, shoot, people are buying Call of Duty every year. Why do we really have to make something new? Well, you know, people buying 2K of the year. Now, no, 2K has changed a lot over the years, but I mean, it's minimal differences year over year. And, and you know what? And you're really hitting on something. Like when I asked the question earlier, you know, I'm not sure if I was 100, you know, one, being 100 as far as uh, the clarity with it, but, you know, my definition of, of, of replayable has been in part because obviously as I evolved, what I was looking for in a game evolved, but also, you know, we came up in the era you know what I mean, where I felt like, particularly the 90s and the early to mid 2000s, yeah. where innovation, you know what I mean? You, you would have your journey, like a game where you're literally not, it's a game that's really an experience where you're not necessarily doing anything, you're just trying to get, you're fighting through whatever to get to, you know, your, your end goal. Yeah. Like a game, like, so in other words, experiences such as that, where I felt like not only was I evolving, but I felt like the industry was evolving with, you know, gaming. So I'm hoping as we are now entering into our next console generation that we don't lose that. Like, we, I don't want it to be what you were talking about. And I agree with you where it's like, okay, do we take a chance? These games, you know, cost a shit ton of money to make. You know, these are our pro proven formulas. The people seem to want it because there is particularly the games where obviously like the Grand Theft Auto is where you could just, you know, do drops, yeah. drops, and they keep coming back. 2K, they keep coming back. VC, well, they keep coming back. Stop. It's stop like, you know, Grand Theft Auto 5. The game's eight years old. <laughs> I mean, and then yeah, the it's like, like, I don't want that to, we all deserve a new Grand Theft Auto, but they don't need to make a new Grand Theft Auto. They don't. And <laughs> it's the thing, like, I don't want the technology. First of all, I mean, you know, what these new consoles from what we're seeing, we, they, they both have had their showcases, Xbox and PlayStation. We know what the consoles can do. We're starting to see what they can do in game. Definitely PlayStation showing off what they can do in game, you know, coming up here. But I, okay. As excited as I am about that, if we're not getting innovation and originality and fresh ideas yeah. to go along with that, it's it's well, how many times that the hype train is going to come to a screeching fucking halt? Well, how many sooner times than later do you see remastered? 
hey, here's this game on Xbox remastered. Remastered. PlayStation 4, remastered. Remastered. And it's just like, okay. How and, about we, how, okay? So scratch remastered, what, what, and where and when can we get just original? Like I will support original. Yeah. You know, all day long. It, it just. For the sake of keeping like that thought process within the developers and you know publishers as a viable option, right? So you know it's 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 important. Like we need as we continue to evolve, we need gaming in the industry to continue to evolve. You know what I mean? So that we're we're all we're in lockstep. And I'm not I'm, I'm not I'm not better than anybody else because I'm I'm not I'm I do that too, right? We were just talking before this about Ghost of Shima and why I haven't bought it yet, <laughs> right? I know it's probably a good game, but I can't Shame. a 60, Shame. but I, I'm trying to Shame. justify a $60 investment in this game that yeah, I know. I'm not 100% certain about, um, you know? You will be. Look, look, that's look, the thing about I got, I got, I'm gonna work on you. Yeah, man, you'll, uh, you know, trust me, man. It, 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 the people have spoken. And that's the thing though, it's just- Ghost, like, man, it's that shit. There's been, there's a lot of great games out there, and I get it. it, it it's $60 is a heavy investment for a lot of yeah, people, man. True. Um, that's why I mean, I live off of indie games most of the time. Indie games are like stupid cheap, they're like five, ten dollars at most for the great replayability. Um, and value great, too. I mean, yeah. what you can get from them, you know, if and when done right, man. That's what's up. So, um, but yeah, man, I mean, but I mean, I think we both had some really strong titles here. I mean, you. Uh, Killer Instinct, Street Fighter, God of War. Yeah, man. And of course, I have my Mario Kart, um, which I learned that apparently it's pronounced Mario. When I moved what? down here from Jersey, it's I always used to say Mario. And then they, <laughs> everybody made fun of me. And then I finally started saying Mario, and I got in the habit of saying it that way. So, yeah, man. Honestly, I, don't, I could not tell you what is the proper way to say it. Man. But I you know what? Look, look, I was, I was introduced to, you know, that world, uh, to that, that plumber as Mario, and he will be Mario. Okay. okay, so it's a, you have you all out there. You have your death. You it's have a soft your day. yeah, exactly. It's a soft day, right? You you have oh. your way of saying it. We have ours, but yeah, man. I think you know some some great replayables. And the thing about it is, they were replayable for good reasons. Mario, the social aspect, you know, God of War it was just about you know evolving a a already successful story. Um, just so many different uh, you know ways. You cannot define replayable in one way. It's just does it grab you whatever in however way. Does it grab you in a way that you come back to it and you make time to come back to it? So real shit, man. And I, and glad we was able to make this thing happen, man. You know, on that note, I want to thank my man, Craig Darrow, the first ever guest on the Champions Material podcast. Hope you, the audience, got some positive energy from this to take with you. As always, shoot any feedback over to champions.materialsv at gmail.com again that's champions.materialsv at gmail.com or leave a voicemail tell us what you think the link is located at the bottom of the description of this episode um, check out our page on facebook instagram and twitter also proud to announce we've officially launched the champions material youtube channel like subscribe any feedback you have there again just we're, we're looking to get better we're looking to get better so always feel free to offer any feedback. You know, we're here for it. Um, we'll be posting episodes on our channel as well as other select content. Um, you know what, man, before we get up out of here, you got anything else for the people? No, man, I definitely appreciate being on here. Uh, yeah, first man. ever, I hopefully, um, you know, I did okay. Set the bar, set you the know, bar, I, I, the bar setter. I, I, I'm a talker. I, I can talk a lot uh, about almost anything. I mean, but this was a really good topic, I think, to start off with um and definitely uh hopefully you know it's, it's not so much you know we're, we're I'm out here trying to really tell people what to play or whatever right, right. Well, you know, my main thing is just like leave yourself open to options try out different things and if it gets frustrating either take a break or push through it absolutely I mean, that, that's the big thing and, and the, games are meant to entertain they are a form of entertainment they are there to be enjoyed so you know that's just how it is. So. And on that note, listen, man, you know, we know, you know, it's, it's, this has been a heavy year, man. 2020 has, uh, if we could cancel, if I can cancel 2020 right now, if I can fast forward to 2021, December 31st, January 1st, whatever, I would do it. So we know, it's, you know, it's been heavy. And, you know, again, as, as my man Craig just said, you know, games, let's just, well, let's have fun with them and keep them in their proper context. Whatever you define as a game that's replayable for you, you know, do it with the right mindset. 
you know, stay strong. You know, we're going to get through, you know, through this. We have, it's been a lot going on out there. We have a pandemic. I get it. And hopefully, you know, myself and Craig gave you some content, something that you can take with you, some of that positive energy to counter uh, what's been a heavy year for all of us. Well, I always said, man, you always got to be like Kobe and I'm LeBron. That, that's the best way. Kobe. That's the best way right there. If you, if you want to, if you want to be a, a yeah. champ. Got to be a shooter. Got to be a shooter. You, you got to be a shooter. You can't you knock them down if you don't shoot them. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man. And on that note, whoever you want to be and whatever you want to be, always be the champion of it. That's Champions Material. Stay tuned. We'll be back sooner than later with our next episode, Marvel Villains. Everybody, be safe. Hold it down. We'll do this again. Thank you for your time, and we're done.